In this lesson, you will learn about flowchart thinking. A flowchart is a way to organize a process in a logical order. In geometry, we'll use them to show how facts lead to conclusions. Flowcharts help people follow your reasoning so they can understand how you reached your conclusion. In a flowchart proof, we place each statement in a bubble and use arrows to show how the logical arguments flow from the information that is given to the conclusion that you're trying to reach. In this example, we're trying to prove that the two triangles are congruent. Before we start actually doing the proof, though, let's figure out which triangle congruency shortcut we're going to use. We're told some given information, and this information is already marked on the drawing. If the given information is not marked on the drawing, make sure you put it there. So in this case, we see that line segment AC is congruent to line segment EC, and line segment BC is congruent to line segment DC. We don't have enough information quite yet to conclude that the triangles are congruent, but we can look at the diagram, and maybe we can find another pair of corresponding parts. Sure enough, in the middle, we have a pair of vertical angles. Vertical angles are always congruent, so we have a pair of congruent angles that will help us in our proof. So now looking at the diagram, we see that we have two pairs of congruent sides marked and a pair of congruent angles, and those angles are included between the two sides. So the triangles are congruent because of side, angle, side. Okay, let's make our flow chart to show the logic that we're using. I'm actually going to start by drawing the bubble for the conclusion. So that would be triangle ABC is congruent to triangle EDC. And we already know that our reason that we're going to use is side angle side. So I'm going to write that right underneath the bubble. I'm going to draw three more bubbles for the statements that help me conclude that these triangles are congruent because of side angle side. I'll put a pair of sides in the first bubble. Line segment AC is congruent to line segment EC because that was given information. So far we have one pair of congruent sides in our flowchart. Now let's put a pair of angles. Angle ACB, that's the angle on top, is congruent to angle ECD because those are vertical angles. So far we have one pair of congruent sides and a pair of congruent angles, so we need one more pair of congruent sides in our flowchart. Line segment BC is congruent to line segment DC because that was given information. Now I will draw the arrows on my flowchart to show the direction of the logic. To use the side angle side triangle congruency shortcut, we needed three pieces of information. We needed two pairs of congruent sides and a pair of congruent angles. So notice that we have three bubbles in our flowchart to support our conclusion. The given information works out a little differently for this one. We're told something about line segment AT. We are told that it is an angle bisector. So line segment AT bisects angle A. This is important because that means that angle LAT is congruent to angle SAT. We are trying to prove that the two smaller triangles are congruent to each other. So far we know that there is one pair of congruent sides and one pair of congruent angles. We need one more pair of, of congruent parts. And we notice that the two triangles share a side. So that shared side is the third piece of congruent parts. Looking at the markings on our diagram, we see that the two triangles are congruent because of side, angle, side. So we now have the reason for our conclusion. The triangles are congruent because of side, angle, side. So now we need to write statements for each of the three pairs of congruent parts. Side angle side starts with the letter S, so why don't we do a pair of congruent sides for the first bubble. We know that line segment LA is congruent to line segment SA because it is given information. Let's do the pair of angles now for the second bubble. We know that angle LAT is congruent to angle SAT because line segment AT bisects angle A. To justify this statement, we use the definition of an angle bisector. 
For our last statement, we need another pair of congruent sides. We know that TA is congruent to itself, and that seems so obvious that we shouldn't have to include it. But remember that our triangle shortcut, triangle congruency shortcut, used side angle side, so we still need to put a statement for the second S. In a proof, every statement needs a reason, so why don't we just write something like same segment. This last statement is also an example of the reflexive property, and you'll learn more about that property in advanced algebra. So this proof looks pretty good so far, but a proof has to be completely self-sufficient, and we're actually missing something. The proof actually has to include a statement that explains how we knew that angle A was bisected. Well, that came from the given information, so let's take a moment to include that as a statement in our proof. So notice in a proof, we are not relying on the reader to go back and look at the given information. Everything is in the proof. In this proof, we are going to use a conjecture that we learned about before we started studying congruent triangles. Looking closely at the given information, we see that it tells us two things about line segments CD and AB. These line segments are not only congruent, but they are also parallel. Well, to prove that triangles are congruent, we need congruent parts, not parallel parts. But maybe that information can still help us. So if line segment CD is parallel to line segment AB, we know something about some of the angles that this diagonal creates. Let's take a moment to refresh our memories about alternate interior angles. When we have two parallel lines cut by a transversal, we know that the alternate interior angles are congruent. Alternate interior angles are the ones that make a Z shape. So in this diagram below the parallelogram here, we see these two angles are congruent alternate interior angles. Up here in our original diagram, we actually have the same exact situation. If we imagine extending the sides and the diagonal, we have two parallel lines cut by a transversal. And we see there is a pair of alternate interior angles that will be helpful to us. Notice that same Z shape we saw in the diagram I drew below. So we know that angle DCA is congruent to angle BAC because they are alternate interior angles. Going back to the given information, I'm going to erase the marks on my diagram that indicated the lines are parallel, and now I'm going to mark them as congruent since the given information also tells us that they're congruent. So from the given information, we got one pair of congruent sides and one pair of congruent angles. That's not enough yet to conclude that these two triangles are congruent, but we notice that the triangles share a side. So line segment AC is of course congruent to itself. We now can see that the two triangles are congruent because of side, angle, side. Here's the first pair of congruent sides. Here's a pair of congruent angles. and the second pair of congruent sides. When doing a flowchart proof, I like to start with the conclusion, but you don't have to. In this case, triangle DAC is congruent to triangle BCA because of side angle side. Now I'm going to write my three statements for the three pairs of congruent parts. My first pair of congruent parts will be a pair of sides. We know that CD is congruent to AB because that was given information. Now I'll do the pair of congruent angles. We know that angle DCA is congruent to angle BAC because those are alternate interior angles. And now one last statement for the second pair of congruent sides. So we can say line segment AC is congruent to itself and don't forget to put a reason for that even though it's so obvious it doesn't seem like we should need to. But we can just point out that they're the same segment or you could write reflexive property. One important detail that is actually missing from our proof right now is that alternate interior angles are only congruent when you have parallel lines. So we need to point out that we know that those lines segments are parallel. And the reason that we know the line segments are parallel is it was given to us. And now our proof is complete. This proof will be a little bit different. Instead of trying to prove that the two triangles are congruent, 
we are trying to prove that two line segments are congruent. We're trying to prove that WR is congruent to GN. Just taking a quick look at the given information, we see that where we are told that line segment RO is congruent to line segment OG and line segment WO is congruent to line segment ON and we also know that the pair of vertical angles is congruent. So it turns out we do indeed have congruent triangles by side angle side. And one thing we know about congruent triangles is that they have congruent corresponding parts. So the logic for our proof will be to explain why the two triangles are congruent and then we can say that well this other pair of line segments must also be congruent because corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. So once again, we are trying to prove that line segment WR is congruent to line segment GN. So I'm going to start this proof with the conclusion. Notice the reason here. Corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. We are allowed to say that because we know that the triangles are congruent because of side angle side. We need a statement for each letter in our triangle congruency shortcut. So we need one pair of sides, a pair of angles, and another pair of sides. Let's start with RO being congruent to GO, and we know that because it was given to us. Now we'll do the pair of vertical angles. Angle ROW is congruent to angle GON. Once again, we know those angles are congruent because they are vertical angles. Now we need one more pair of congruent line segments. We know that line segment WO is congruent to line segment ON because that information was given to us. There are other ways to write proofs in geometry. We can write a paragraph, we can write two columns, but a flowchart proof is nice because the arrows show the direction of the logic and it's a great way to communicate what it is you're thinking while you're doing a proof and signing off.